Good evening. So tonight I'm trying something uh, different. So um, what I'm trying to show you is how you can get better at uh, analyzing data, at statistics, at data science, whatever you want to call it. So especially if you're a beginner, sometimes you might uh, wonder how do I get good? Do I need to take classes? Which classes do I need to take online courses, etc.? And these are all good. I'm not telling you not to, to take uh, classes, not to take these uh, online courses or whatever, do that. But what makes the, all the difference, what really makes all the difference is you downloading data and just getting your hands dirty. So that's what we're going to do tonight. So um, I found a little data set on the UCI machine learning repository which has uh, a lot of, um, really a lot of data sets available. You can choose data sets um, for uh, classification, regression, clustering. You can choose small data, larger data. You can uh, choose different areas or disciplines. So it's really, I mean, you, you can really find anything you need and want. What I advise you to do though is choose something that is uh, in your area or, there, or, there, or that interests you. So if you're interested into the social sciences, pick one of the data sets from the social sciences and pick a small data set. Why a small data set? Because um, it's uh, a data set that you can eyeball easily. So it's, it's nice to be able to open it in uh, a simple text editor, for example, just eyeball it, just take a look at it, make uh, sense of it, understand it, without necessarily having to first load it and then maybe solve uh, a lot of issues. What is also nice with this particular example is that you can find already some people that have tried to do a uh, little uh, stuff with it, some analysis with it. Um, so I found this uh, blog post interesting. Um, it has some SAS code in there, so you could try to follow the blog post and translate the code into R. And I found this other one, which uh, has Python code. Uh, so you could also translate the Python code into R. And, and what's nice is that this one is more of a, let's say, machine learning approach. So here the um, person that wrote it is more interested into predicting the target variable and uh, so splitting the data into a testing and training sets and then using the training set to build a model and then uh, get some predictions using the trained model and compute a, a score on the test set. Whereas this uh, here is more um, what you'd see if you have a background in econometrics, for example. So this is more, okay, let's fit a model on the whole data and uh, let's just see how, how good the fit is. And let's look at some, uh, let's add some statistics, some diagnostics, and then the author here also tried the log log model. So you can do whatever you need. So if you have more of a computer science, machine learning background, you might be interested in doing something like this. So predi a prediction problem. Whereas if you have more of a, I would say, yeah, social, social science background, econometrics background, you might be much more interested into doing something like that. So what I'm going to show you is how to approach such a problem. So the first goal will really be just to download the data, get the, the data into R, maybe do some um, some exploratory analysis, some graphs, and then we'll see uh, if we'll do a model or not. So I downloaded the data already. Um, so I have it over here. So um, what I like to do is take a look uh, at the data using cat, for example, so uh, or head. Maybe in this case, a head would be um, would be would be better. So let me maybe go like this. Yeah. So if you use not cat head. So if you use head. So this is the um, the Linux command line. Um, it would work the same way on uh, Mac OS. And if you have the um, Linux subsystem for Windows, you can also follow along. So this is not this has nothing to do with uh, with data science or machine learning or statistics or whatever. It just my preferred way to quickly take a look at text files. You can of course open the data with uh, any text editor and take a look at it like this. Um, so as we see, this is 
yeah, standard, it's actually a standard CSV file. And actually, uh, the um, so the data comes in two files. So you have the machine.data file, which is what we've seen here. It's a simple, yeah, simple CSV file. But you also have the uh, machine.names. And this should be the names. Oh, actually, it's a whole interesting. It's a whole documentation. Um, yeah, so it's a whole readme file. So we have 209 uh, observations. We have um, 10 columns. Only six are predictive attributes. Two are non-predictive. So I guess those must be some form of IDs, things like that. Uh, one goal field and the linear regressions, I guess. So what's interesting here in this data set is that they uh, gave you the target variable, of course, which is th this thing, the published relative performance. So the goal of this uh, task here is, uh, or, or what we're looking at, are uh, the performance of CPUs from the 80s. So um, some old school stuff. And um, the idea was to look at the published relative performance of these CPUs, build a model uh, that is based on characteristics from uh, the hardware to try to predict this performance and then compare uh, compare the two. So this ERP it's, is the uh, estimated, so maybe I'll zoom in a little bit, this is the estimated relative performance from the original article. So what is nice here is that you will be able to, um, if you build a machine learning model, you'll be able to compare the, the performance of your machine learning model with the ones from the original authors. So that's that's really cool. And um, and yeah, so what do we have? So these here, so these are our um, 10, so no missing data. So this is also nice because missing data, if you're not, uh, I mean, if you're a beginner and uh, you're not familiar with how to treat missing data, maybe it's best to not uh, choose a data set with missing data or really just for training purposes just ignore it if you have it in your data set however should you want to treat it correctly then you, you might need to look into uh, missing data imputation and things like that that's a whole a whole topic on itself so then we have some um, so prp is continuously evaluated um, okay, so then they show some instances in this range. So I, do, I don't know if the higher the better. So it's a relative performance, but relative to what? So this I, 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 did, I haven't, um, I didn't read the paper, so um, I don't know. Um, because I, I didn't, I, I, did, I haven't found it. So um, that's a bit of, so here you have the, uh, the reference, but I, I wasn't able to find it. Um, and apparently it was also used for this one uh, so yeah um, maybe if you're really interested you could read the paper and um, that's also a nice thing to do of course if you want to to learn read the papers but sometimes they might be um, a bit too complicated so sometimes it's a bit difficult to get into into papers so um, honestly I, I I think I can say that I learn more from blog posts and from technical books than, than from papers, especially um, daily yeah, daily usage of, of R and data science tricks, statistics tricks, definitely from blog posts, definitely more. So uh, let's see, so I have these two files, so let's create a little script.r and let's load Emacs, so my editor of choice. So of course uh, you can do that uh, in our studio. So I, it's just that I um, I really enjoy Emacs. Well, this is Spacemax, which is some kind of uh, Emacs distribution. So let's start by loading the tidy. Yeah. Tidy, ah crap! The, mm, is asking me where we should start the uh, R project. So it takes a bit of time to load. There we are. So tidyverse, thank you. Finally, so and now let's uh, read in the data. So we we saw that the data is a simple CSV file, so we'll be able to simply load that with um, 
issue with any any uh, yeah with the read CSV file that would be easy. So it was machine or machine or machines I don't remember. It was machine dot data. All right. Good. So yeah, uh, that's an issue because it doesn't have column names. So um, call names is false. Okay. So let's take a look at. Maybe let me zoom in a little bit on my code. Maybe that's that would be nice. Yeah, I think that's better. So here we have our um, our data. So we need to rename that because that's not uh, that won't be very useful. So actually, I think maybe the best way here would be yeah maybe just um, just go back, well I could go back to a terminal, but now I'm in R. Let me just read lines and see what uh, comes out of it. So it was names, I think, machine.names, yeah. So read lines just uh, reads in, let me move my head. Read lines just uh, reads in some data, so here we have it, so attributes. So the first one is the vendor name, advisor, Amdal, Apollo, well, I IBM, okay, I know IBM, I know HP, Hamlet Packard, and that's the only, that I like, I only know these two. Okay, so these are probably vendors that don't, ah, Siemens, of course, but yeah, those are probably um, vendors that uh, don't exist anymore or that don't build CPUs anymore. So nowadays, CPUs are, yeah, it's, you don't have so much vendors. Uh, maybe with ARM things will change a little bit, but uh, for now. So, um, the best way to uh, do that, I guess, would be to use names, machine data. Oh, crap. Yeah, thank you. And then just use something like where I write it manually. So, if you only have 10, 10, um, if you only have 10 uh, columns, uh, you can write them like like I'm doing. If you have hundreds, which sometimes happens with the uh, UCI machine learning repository with data that you download there, you will uh, need to parse this uh, names file using some uh, regular expressions, and uh, you will need to um, yeah to, to 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 do that in an automated way because if not, uh, it's going to be hell. Let me just yeah. Okay, that was not what I wanted. Okay, that's better like this, I think. So um, C, so the cache, ch min, then ch max, and finally the target variable, which is prp. And the estimated target variable from the original article. So they said that only six were um, predictive. So I wonder, I wonder which one are non-predictive. So I guess the model, well, yeah, the model name probably is non-predictive because I guess it's unique. Um, vendor names, vendor names should be should be interesting, and they should be, yeah, they should be predictive, I guess. It's like yeah, some categories. So um, mo model name probably not because they're um, they're all unique. So it's a simple ID, uh, individual ID of the. Uh, well, we'll 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 check that. But that's what I expect. Those are all predictive. So how much do we have here? One, two, three, four, five, and six. Oh, so they don't count the vendor name as a predictive value. Interesting. Because I thought the vendor name, I, I thought the non-predictive ones were the model name and the ERP, right? Because that's, you're not going to use that, but, and that's the target variable, so what, what, what they call the goal. And then we'll have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I have seven. So I guess they don't count the vendor name, but let's see if we can use it. I'm, I'm fairly certain we can. So um, let's run this. So let's take a look now at our data. So 
yeah that looks already much much better so uh, let's see if uh, my hunch so let's let's move my head way over here yeah that's better uh, let's see if uh, the the model name is unique I guess it is so we have yeah we have 209 we have 209 unique model names and we have uh, 209 rows in our data set so another way to check that if you have uh, some doubts would be uh, to run this and to maybe take a look at some summary statistics of n so for example you could uh, look at the minimum of n and well the minimum might not be as useful as that but the maximum would tell you that you always have only one so all values are completely unique so if you add for the maximum two then this would mean that one value would be unique another another way would be uh, maybe even easier maybe even better would be to simply say uh, do i have any line where n is greater than strictly greater than one and you see that uh, that's not the case so um, everything is unique so yeah that's definitely not a very useful uh, variable so let's remove it from um, our data set so that was model name and uh, I guess I will remove uh, ERP as well for now uh, because uh, this will cause issues if I'm if I'm running a model this will cause is issues because it, it might get used as um, as a predictor as a feature which it's not what I would want, of course. So now uh, that we have our data set in a nice little format, what would be interesting would be maybe to take a look at, um, at some graphs, uh, take a look. So we have different vendors over here. Maybe we could... Uh, oh, that's not... That's the problem with um, keyboard shortcuts. Sometimes you press the wrong ones. So um, yeah, so let me let me see. Um, yeah, maybe we can take a look at some. First of all, some uh, descriptive statistics. So I, I I never explored this data set, so I'm literally doing this live. Um, so I'm going. I really showing you how I uh, how I uh, do this type of things uh, let me already try with the minimum just to see if my code works uh, interesting I thought this would give me the uh, minimum across all my different across all my different vendors but it looks like maybe vendor yeah maybe, maybe let's try first which oh yeah interesting so looks like a regular exp mm, that's interesting wanted to use a regular expression so starts with m or c so to get the uh, minimum of um interesting that's that's interesting so those are the minimum values for each vendor okay thing is I don't know exactly what what that means so uh, but yeah I guess it might be interesting for you to see and then with C you would do it like this okay so this would be uh, for the uh, different for the different um, for the, the variables that start with C maybe also let's take a look at the plot so what would I want to see so I guess I'd be interested into differences between vendors and I would be interested I guess into taking a look at PRP maybe so yeah let's try something like 
GM bar AS. Uh, never know if it's bar or call that I should use. Uh, let's see. Always mix both of them. So yeah, and also I should probably summarize my data first. Yeah, that's not going to work. So let's first go by vendor. So I know you cannot do this uh, summarization step immediately within within um, within uh, ggplot, but yeah, it's not really what I want to do. So I guess I would be interested into yeah average performance by vendor. Are there vendors that are on average much more performant than, than others? I think that could be an interesting uh, question. So let's compute this mean of the PRP and uh, let's take a look. So this should give me something. Oh, stat count can only have... So what's wrong? Is it because of... I guess it might be geom call and not geom bar. Yep. Interesting. That's interesting. Uh, so we do see that there, there seems to be some vendors that uh, are on average way, way different than, um, than others. So again, I don't know if PRP means, if high PRP means high performance or maybe low performance because it's relative. So relative i don't get it i don't know if it's relative to another um, cpu or that is used maybe as the um, the baseline i have no idea but if that's the case then this amdal one would seem to be um, definitely the most performance so that's interesting so of course uh, you could do different types of plots you could do uh, violin plots to see also the variance etc that's really up to you. Uh, it is important to plot your data, to look at your data. That's uh, that's definitely very important. So uh, maybe let's also take a look at um, maybe if we add another dimension, maybe a facet. What would be interesting? So let me see again. What do I have in my data? Thing is, I don't really have any other category, right? I only have. I only have um, uh, how many values of min I have of cash. Cash should be, I mean, cash should be shouldn't have that many values. Cash should be kind of discrete. Yeah, twenty-two values still, twenty-two values. There were CPUs with caches of zero with no cash. Well, wow, that's interesting. Well, I'm, I'm not a computer scientist, so I don't know about these things. It's weird. They were C Okay, that's super interesting because, first of all, I thought like eight or maybe four was the minimum you could see, but there are CPUs with no cache, one or two, I guess, uh, kilobytes. Then it goes to, uh, so 8, 16, 24, 30, and this is weird, 65, okay, One, 131, that's very bizarre. So what would be perhaps interesting would be to see also if um, all vendors have uh, a, a CPU in all cache category. So here what I would be interested in would be maybe to add a facet and see if we have something yeah that I was afraid that it might not be very readable. Uh, yeah maybe 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 I should do it the other way around. How many vendors do I have? Yeah I think I have ma more vendors then uh, well does that make sense let's try if if i have my cache da -da. oh that seems to be taking more time huh? oh no it's not cache not found uh yeah 
because that's not how you write it. So, okay. Oof. Well, what's sure anyway is that not all vendors have CPUs in all categories, and actually, Amdel. Oh, interesting. Amdel, which was the our most performant one seems to only have two different uh, types of CPUs with different ca types of caches. So, again, you could, uh, you could continue, you could um, build some other graphs, uh, and you should, actually. Um, you could also uh, simply compute some, some, uh, some averages, etc. What would be perhaps interesting, in my case here, would be to... Um, maybe i could do something like like this so i will um do a replacement maybe not g not globally yeah i will do this replacement to basically be able to quickly yeah let me reload the data great to uh, quickly s be able to select over here that will be much better so now I can get the minimum ooh, vendor oh yeah because vendor is not vendor anymore but F vendor so now I can get my minimum for every variable so I cheated a little bit instead of using this regular expression which doesn't seem to be supported but I think it was or it is and maybe yeah maybe I'm doing something wrong I think anyway I kind of cheated a little bit so I renamed all my variables and I can select all the features using this uh, first F so um, so here you can have the maximum um, if you want more functions well the way I always use it is using this table LST I don't remember if I just need to do it like this yeah so this this one is really it's a nice little trick um, because it really allows you to to get all the statistics you need very very quickly so I have the minimum I have the maximum if I want a standard deviation I just do that and I, I could then take a look and it's really nice because uh, I, I simply have this nice data frame let me disappear for a bit so I have this nice data frame where I can take a look very quickly by vendor at um, yeah at whatever whatever I want what's interesting is that I have some NAs so for the cash for example for certain vendors so what what this means is that um, these are vendors that only have CPUs with that particular cash or with that particular uh, minimum or maximum values for these different uh, variables so that's interesting to see and I'm back so um, so yeah so I'm showing you some tricks so all this stuff here all this you know this little especially tricks like that this is, these are things that come with experience and here of course knowing about uh, these things well I mean there's no no secret you you have honestly I, I learn a lot by just following the relevant people on Twitter so whenever there is an announcement so these are all deep layer features so whenever there's an, an, annou an announcement uh, our studio and uh, the relevant uh, people uh, Hadley Wickham and uh, all the our studio crew just tweet about it they write a blog post about it and then I, I try to use that in my own daily workflows so if you if I would show you my uh, source code from my projects at work it would be almost only pure 100% uh, tidyverse code I, I really use it very heavily um, not only tidyverse of course but I use it very very heavily and so I'm really used to it but the way I learned was really by downloading data trying some stuff and then writing blog posts about it so I, I try to write a lot of blog posts and uh, yeah that's that's it forces me to learn the package it forces me to 
really understand how it works before I can communicate it. So writing is really, really important as well. So get your hands dirty on data and write, 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 write. If you don't want to publish because you're shy, don't be shy. Honestly, no one is going to, um, to insult you or whatever for sharing code and sharing stuff. So learn, get your hands dirty and write, 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 write. Super important. Follow the relevant pe people on Twitter and interact with them. Ask them questions, They're super nice. Uh, so it's a very, very nice community. So that's super, super important. So we're not done yet. So let's try, let's try to run um, a little thinking about uh, as I'm, as I'm typing and thinking about how I would do that. So maybe I'll just do some, I, I've been recording for half an hour already. So maybe I'll do a very quick and very dirty uh, econometrics type of regression where uh, I don't do a split by um, training and testing set where I will just really do uh, something that uh, will annoy maybe a lot of you but which is done a lot it's, it's really done a lot in many in many fields where you literally just do this you just take the whole data so now it's not PRP maybe but uh, TPRP, actually I should also change maybe my code over here to make it work. So PRP to TPRP, good. And uh, yeah, vendor to F vendor. And uh, what did I have? I think, yeah, cash, but cash I only have once. Or twice, so that can do it manually. Yeah. Yeah. Also, something else. Um, oh yeah, I'm loading the. Uh, yeah, great. Okay, my code runs. Something else. So you you might see me uh, move around this file uh, without ever touching my mouse. So this is, again, has absolutely nothing to do with statistics, data analysis, data science, or whatever you want to call it. Um, but I think that it's quite important to get to know whatever text editor you, you work with. Get to know it very well, because whatever you're going to do, you're going to spend a lot of time writing, 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 for whether it will be code or reports or whatever. So having using and learning how to use a good text editor is super important because it makes you so much more productive. Here again, I mean, I, I like uh, Space Max, which is um, Emacs running with uh, Vim key bindings. So you could learn Vim. It's a the learning curve curve is a bit steep, but it's it makes you super productive. Or take any other uh, text editor. It could be the R Studio text editor, which is also quite good. And whatever you choose, choose one and learn it very well. Learn the keyboard shortcuts very well. It will make you so much more productive in the long run. It's it's absolutely, I mean, I, I, it would be so interesting to see how much more it makes uh, someone that writes a lot of code or that writes a lot, how, how much more productive it makes that person to really learn a good text editor like Vim, Emacs, and I don't know any other, <laughs> but I guess they might be quite use, quite good as well. But Vim is, or Emacs, or in this case Space Max here, is absolutely amazing. So I, I really recommend it. It's again a bit complicated, but it's uh, it's it's so good. So um, so I run a simple, very simple linear regression. So maybe let me save it in a model actually. So. So what I guess, what I guess uh, the authors um, did at the time is they ran a linear regression like that, and then they basically ran predict linear model on the whole data set. And uh, oh yeah, uh, machine data. And they and and this is this is basically ERP. Well, we might not. We might not get the exact same values, but should be close enough, uh, I guess. So let's let's really do something a bit a bit disgusting. So maybe yeah, I removed I removed ERP 
maybe I should wait a second so what I'm going to do is that I'm going to make a copy of the data since since it's uh, so small yep and so let's add so machine data to my ERP is going to be my ERP great so now we can do something like this so my ERP and uh, what was it T ERP uh, so what have I done can't convert from double to integer hmm interesting oh yeah uh, I'm not doing that on the good data sets oh crap TERP does not exist uh, really okay so how, how oh yeah in this hmm let me rerun this again so head machine data 2 hmm weird I don't know what's happening so linear model my ERP here it is so let's do again ahead of machine data 2 T ERP and my ERP well should work okay I don't know what happened weird but uh, okay so I rerun the code so now I have my ERP and uh, I could compare it to T ERP uh, so just putting them side by side and eyeballing them is of course not the best way to do it but still uh, it can give you very quickly uh, it can very quickly show you how far off you are and it looks like I am pretty far off actually I have negative values which the authors don't have so I guess in the original paper they, they might have done something a bit more subtle than um, than just uh, a linear regression and actually now that I remember there was this uh, blog post where the auto used a log log model so let's try that so yeah I guess uh, I might need to do a little transformation on my data so much machine data uh, yeah so let's do it like this so it should work so if I mutate across start with F bum, bum, and I say log this should log all my all my uh, oh but wait a second now that now that I remember uh, if I take a look at my data right I do have the vendor over here which uh, in this case was used in the regression so R should have converted it R should have converted it into yep into dummy variables so that's that's fine however now I cannot simply uh, log that of course because that's uh, those are categorical variables so not good let's see of course I will have I think it let's call it something else yep so that's an issue because um, Yep, that's an issue because here, of course, I have my vendor that I need to remove. Now it worked. So this, or it should have worked, but somehow it didn't. Oh, still, still I have some problems. Interesting. I guess it might be because uh, if I take again a look at my data probably have uh, oh I have the model name over here again and I might also have zeros 
uh, I might have zeros, but those should be converted to an A. Hmm. Now it's getting annoying. Now, oh yeah, I did not remove it. There we are. So as you see, there's a lot of trial and error involved. It's not, you know, it's it's not because I'm I'm a, I'm an expert or whatever, or I have been doing this for a long time, or like that's that's all that's all uh, that has nothing to do with uh, you. You could have been doing things like that for literally for for 20 years. And still need. I think I I've been doing these things for since well, let's say when I started my PhD. I I started doing statistics of course before, but let's say serious stuff with my PhD. So I've been doing that for almost for, yeah almost ten years, almost ten years. And and yeah, I still need this back and forth. I still need to explore. I still I still need trial and error. I still need to think about it, even for simple stuff. Sometimes I need to go back to books or to um, to to blog posts that I that I remember. I still need to to grab stuff and and read and uh, and and try things out. So it's not because you don't don't think that because you need this uh, trial and error, this exploration, that you write crappy code or whatever that uh, you're you're a bad data analyst that's quite the contrary i think actually i think having this humility to know that uh, you still need to keep exploring keep learning is what will make you um, a good data scientist in the long run so let's try a log log uh, model now and just see i think i will end it there just see yeah so i have an a's i guess or i have uh, oh yeah, that's because also I might have actually, maybe I could, uh, yeah, I could remove, I guess it's the T over here, that's probably causing issues. Oh, still I have, still I have some issue, yeah, I guess there might be some NAs over there or, or some... So he's, he's uh, complaining about uh, singularity. So in general, this happens when we have uh, some... Um, oh, I think I see it, actually. Looks like the cache and the ch max. So I guess cache max seems like that's basically almost the same variable. So could that be the issue? That could very well be the issue. So there might be. So this is something I didn't check at all. Now I realize, I didn't check. Yeah, there's still something wrong. So I didn't check um, multicollinearity at all, and there might very well be a problem somewhere um, between all these variables. So if I take a look again at my, uh, oh yeah, I didn't. Okay, so let me write it here. There might be some uh, hints there. So that's actually something I should have literally started by that. Uh, it's something that I almost never do, I must say, which is bad. But this is probably one of the first things you should do as well, is look at the, um, if, if they, if the correlation between all your variables. Is there any correlation between all your variables? And uh, sometimes your variables are perfectly correlated, and this will, of course, cause an issue. Yeah, I guess there might be something here in the... Um, there might be some, some kind of linear relationship between some of the variables here. I guess, you know, between the machine cycle in nanoseconds and the minimum and the maximum or the cache. There's probably, probably something here that uh, that explains why I'm having issues and actually I'm surprised that the linear the very first linear regression worked without a hiccup but I didn't take I didn't really take a look at the um, summary statistics at the diagnostics there might be something there oh yeah you see that's mm, wait no that's that's not that's because I reran everything and I have still my uh, models. So now, yeah. 
Now if we take a look, well, I mean, the R squared is very high. Um, like nothing really shocks me at first sight. Nothing really shocks me. But the cycle is not significant. That's the only... I know, there's also this... Oh, but that's a dummy variable for microdata, uh, one of the vendors. But this one is not significant, so maybe, maybe this thing is uh, correlated, way too much correlated with something else. So that's the uh, the machine cycle. So there might be something something there. So let's take a look. So I think if I take a look at, I don't remember if I have to. I don't think so. Let's if I have to convert it to. Um, yeah, I do have to convert it to a matrix so it's something that I this one is really something that I don't do very often which is bad X must be numeric yeah I guess it's because I still have the vendor yeah let's try again but this time Yeah, and now, and now let's convert it. Oh, God damn it! So is this going to work or not? So let me see. So machine data. So let me remove f vendor. So this is of course, and now. If I convert it to a matrix, yep, that is good. So now, how do I do? So is it core or is it, or is it core with two? Is it with two R's? Maybe it's with two R's. I don't remember. Like it's something that I never do, and I'm ashamed. I should do it. Well, in, in general, you you would... Yeah, so it's not with two R's. I don't know why. Maybe cop. Honestly, I am ashamed. Oh, here we are. But it should work with, with correlation as well. That's weird. So, oh yeah. It didn't work before, but... Um, so that's the correlation. So now, um, of course, we can ignore the um, target variable, because this one, of course will be correlated uh, well it should be but we had a problem with this one well i don't see anything <sighs> yeah okay there's some correlate i have a, some high co yeah okay this is normal but some high correlation there mean max yeah between mean and max the cache yeah i guess mean could be i mean yeah i guess i could remove Let's try. Maybe I could remove um, the minimum because it's quite correlated with the maximum. Let's see. Yeah, it's still not working. So this is where... Um, oh, I guess it didn't work because I already had removed. So let me... So this is really not... This is really a very messy script because it's starting to be you know all over the place so it tells me that model name does not exist uh, i don't know why it should be oh yeah it's because it's not model name but it's weird i don't know what so machine data no f vendor so TRP uh, so this thing F model name oh yeah so for some reason F model name is already so you see the script is starting to get very messy so this is in general when I and TRP as well weird so this is where I would start to uh, refactor my script because now it's very messy I would just, you know, try some stuff.
still not still not working so yeah i guess there's still something uh there's there's still some variable here that is heavily correlated with another one maybe the cache yeah, maybe if i remove the cache uh, because it might be correlated with with uh, cache min or whatever it might be I don't know. There might be some some very some. It it might it might it might be completely linearly dependent. Who knows? So this is where, of course, um, reading the original paper would be very useful. But you see uh, something. Yeah, still still not working. So I'm missing something there. It might be something completely obvious that I'm missing now. But you see, even for a, a small problem something that uh, should should not be problematic well it can still take you a bit it can still surprise you it can still take you some time to figure it out uh, what is really important again is to get your hands dirty just try things out try see why it's not working read some blog posts read some books ask for help follow the relevant people on Twitter and you can ask for you can ask for help you can see whenever a new package is released with with some functions that you could use so this is for me the only way to to get good at a thing whatever it is is just get your hands dirty and um, you don't necessarily need to already have done hours and hours of online training or even that's good that is good but get your hands dirty I know a lot of people who have done these online courses, who got all these nice certificates, I done them them as well. I mean, we all did. We all we all do. But the problem is that they only did that, and then they never really took uh, time to continue to hone their 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 skills, and that is a big mistake. And uh, sometimes they uh, they just forget. Um, stuff and they, they they only do one thing maybe at their job and they do it very well but whenever they need to do something a bit different they, they might start to, to to forget or you know so get your hands dirty go back to the basics you you see simple linear regla regression threw me off go back to the basics if you're already intermediate or or even a senior already or whatever just take some basic data and try to do some things and maybe try to also think about problems differently so if you're for a more if you're from a more machine learning background try to solve an issue as a social scientist would would do so like the first blog post i showed you where the um, author was much more interested into the regression and the uh, diagnostics of, of the regression if you're a more of a social scientist Try to do it a, in, in a machine learning way. So do the training, testing, validation split, and just see some, get familiar with cross-validation, see, see how that works. So it's really super important. Um, and uh, I think that's, that's the only way to really, really get good is just download data, keep finding problems to solve and, and just solve them. That's, that's what I want to say. So uh, maybe I'll do some other videos like that where uh, I'll just download some data and just try to explore and try to do some stuff. So um, hope you enjoyed and uh, if you did, like and subscribe. That's what all the cool kids say. Goodbye.